Hi, I'm Tom Luschiavo, Education Manager here at Pasco Scientific. And I'm Ron Fieldhouse, Training Specialist here at Pasco. And we're here today to talk about the wireless pH sensor, and we're going to do a little experiment using some household chemicals. To get the sensor ready, I'm going to first remove the storage solution. It just unscrews. Um, it's very easy to spill, so I want to put it off to the side. Um, the cap, I could either slide it up or I'm going to remove it completely. I tend to like to remove it completely, but it really doesn't make much difference. All right, to further prepare it, I'm going to turn it on. It's just a matter of holding down the start button just for a moment. Then I notice it starts to blink red by the Bluetooth icon and the ID number. So now that he's powered it up, I'm going to go into the SparkView software. I'm going to hit the Bluetooth icon. Um, this is in-app pairing because it is a Bluetooth low energy device. My device is already found, has the right ID number. So I'm going to select that device and it is indicating that it's connected. I notice that it's starting to blink green, meaning that it's seen the computer. I'm going to hit done. And now, once I am connected or paired, my sensor measurements will appear right on the home screen. All right, I'm going to rinse off the storage solution. The bulb at the very end is a little bit porous, so I want to use a little bit of force with the water to get it off. Then I'm going to place it into a baking soda solution. So right from the home screen, I can actually see the live measurements. So you can actually do the, this whole experiment right from the home screen, just putting into different household chemicals and monitoring and recording those pHs. We want to provide a little more structure for the students, so we're actually going to open up a Spark Lab, which is a pre-configured file um, to guide the students through the experiment. So I'm going to hit Experiments. I'm going to hit pH of household chemicals. I'm going to hit Open. And the great thing about the Spark Labs is it gives the students some more structure and background. It tells them about the materials and safety information, some theory about pH, a little bit of a prediction question to get their minds thinking about what should be happening or what they can expect. And now we get right into the data collection. So this is organized as a table, so I'm actually going to organize myself before I start collecting all the data. So Ron will tell me what uh, chemicals we'll be testing. The first chemical I'd like to use is the baking soda solution. The second one is a fruit juice solution. And the last is an ammonia solution. And I could add more or less chemicals here to this table. Right now we're going to stick with three. Now, since I've never removed it from the baking soda solution, I'm not going to rinse it again. But it's good practice when you go from one solution to another, you should always rinse it. I'm going to hit start. And once my pH stabilizes in that baking soda solution, I'm just going to hit this checkbox because I'm in manual sampling mode. All right, I'm going to rinse it. And it's ready for the next. I'm placing it in the fruit juice. Now, once he puts it in the fruit juice, I see that it's a much lower pH, indicating that it is acidic. And your students will be able to figure that out. Once it stabilizes again, I hit check. And it's ready to go in the last ammonia solution. And there we go. We see a nice big jump to, for that pH. And I'm going to hit check for that one. And then I'm going to stop my data collection. If I wanted to, could I edit this Spark Lab and have a more visual way of seeing the data? Could I make a bar graph? Yes. So right now we have it in a nice table, but some of your students might appreciate or understand this more in a bar graph. So I'm going to add a new page. I'm going to select the template. I just want the whole page to be the bar graph. I'm going to select bar graph icon right here. And now I need to assign those axes. So I'm going to click on one of the axes, and my x-axis I'm going to make the household chemicals that I added, and my y-axis, I'm going to make the pH. I'm going to hit OK. Here's my bar graph. I'm going to adjust that a little bit so I can see it better. And there we go. We have a nice visual representation for the students to really understand the pH of those household chemicals. Um, so easy to use a uh, sensor, connected quickly, a nice experiment that has a lot of, a lot of um, applications across grade ranges when you want to measure the pH of various things. Um, in this case, we're visualizing it with a bar graph. If you want to see more about this wireless sensor or other wireless sensors, go to pasco.com wireless. Thank you for joining us. Bye.